get get the <coughs> notes document here so we can get some attendance going. I'll throw that in chat. You can add your names into the Pendy document. Hopefully I got the right file there. Close a dozen other emails. Seems like you got it. There we go. Good. Close my mailbox. And stop editing videos today. And let's go to our working group page here. Cool. And community. And the working group page. So, has Vadim joined? And hello. Hey, Vadim. Yay. Yay! Good. We have we have one of the co-chairs. Is Danny on the call by any chance? Haven't heard from Danny in a long time. Our external chair. Nope, I don't see him. And I haven't seen him here in a while, actually. Yeah. He had sent an email that um, he had gotten swamped a while back, um, so I'm I'm just checking in to see who's joined us. So um, if you guys don't know, um, uh, Red Hat Summit has gone virtual. I've said this multiple times on previous things. And um, on April 27th, um, I'm holding an OpenShift Commons gathering. Um, and there will be live chat, and there is a pre-recorded State of OKD talk um, that's going to be one of the on-demand um, videos. And if you would like to join, you just go to the link that's here, that Red Hat Summit, and register for Summit, and you'll get an email reminding you that the gathering exists. Um, it's kind of hidden in the agenda, but it's there. Um, and it's all day on the 27th, not all day, but from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. ish, depending on how long the AMA session goes. So if you'd like to join in there and um, hang out in the chat during the day, um, that would be great, as um, then you could answer questions or ask questions. And I'll just go to the page. Well, Diane, at least I plan to be there. But, so, yeah, so you'll see. The structure of the day is um, much shorter, and it is getting shorter all the time um, because people tell me people will not stay the whole day. So um, we have, That's unfortunate. yeah, that, well, it's unfortunate, but then everything is available on demand as well. And so I recorded with Christian um, and Daniel and a bunch of other people sort of what we normally would do at a um, for technical talks. Those are all going to okay. be pre-recorded pre and loaded. So um, I was going to try and get an, an F cause one done too with Dusty or Benjamin, if I could coerce them into it. So that would be that. And Paul Cormier is supposed to be coming and doing a fireside chat with me, but so far his schedule is not permitting him to pre-record that with me yet. But there's some really good case studies and um, lots of lots of good stuff going on. So uh, and all the updates um, are coming in for the up the future of OpenShift 4. So that's that's my um, pitch for you guys to um, hang out with us on the 27th. Um, and now I'm going to check and see if Christian has joined. Uh, not yet. So I but um, Christian may not be here, but Vadim is here. And um, I'm going to see if I, I can just pull joined. Hi, Hi there. Yay! All right. All right. There you go. So um, I'll just motor on a little bit with my little bit. I have not, I've fixed a couple of broken links on um, okd.io um, when we bumped it to the latest version of documentations, um, all the links to all the 3.11 specific stuff broke because obviously it's not the latest, but I haven't gotten through all of them yet. So um, bear with me and I will get that state of talk that Christian and Vadim recorded also embedded on that site. and. I promise it will all be done before April 27th um, and sooner if I can find some time. Um, so how about if Vadim and Christian, if you give us an update on, I thought I heard that um, Vadim got a beta 2 out. 
the door. So if I stop talking, um, hopefully Vadim or Christian can give us an update on that. Uh, that's right. I think I'll hand it off to Vadim uh, directly because I've been uh, called off to work uh, on something else this sprint. Um, I'll be back full time on OKD uh, in a week, but uh, yeah, right now working on something else. Um, so Vadim, um, if you could tell us about Beta 2, that'd be great. Sure. Um, yeah, Beta 2 is out of the door. Um, we're trying to keep uh, a weekly schedule of fresh betas. Basically, those are promoted nightly. So there's nothing fancy about them. Uh, the only significant difference is that these are being properly uploaded to Quay now, and uh, there is an upgrade path from uh, first beta to the second one. So if you installed uh, a beta one using a Quay images, you should be able to upgrade to beta two and uh, We'll be adding more upgrade paths every day we upload a new uh, a new beta release. Um, I'm hoping to prepare beta three today or tomorrow, and we'll keep the schedule of making fresh betas in the beginning of the week, probably Monday or Tuesday, before our uh, work group meetings uh, with fresh snapshots of things and getting them uploaded. Um, hey, Vadim, is, is there is nightly releases? Does it, you, does it... yeah. you broke you up. You're breaking uh, up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh. Can, can you hear me okay now? Oh, that, uh, yeah, we can yeah. hear you now, but we didn't hear your entire okay. question. Oh, yeah. I was I was asking if there's anything that distinguishes the the beta from any of the other um, nightly releases that we've been building from? Or, or are we just picking one of those and, and kind of pinning it and saying this one's going to be a beta release? Yeah, ju just just picking a nightly and promoting it as a beta. Okay. There is n nothing fancy about them except being uploaded to Quay, so it's going to be there uh, probably forever. But um, we'll we'll talk about that. I I don't want them to be forever. Um, you know. You sound news. sad with that thought. Well, um, I would like to for them to be there for like a month, maybe two. But we want to encourage people to update often. I which see. Yeah. Means I yeah, which means at some point we will have to force people to update. And we don't have any other mechanism other than removing old beaters. Uh, right, so other news. A few more other fixes have landed on vSphere. Uh, the vSphere node agent thing should now work in, in fresh nightlies from today. Uh, I didn't get a chance to test it. And I don't even know what to expect from it, so um, it should probably um, announce the correct address to the vSphere. It doesn't affect the functionality, it just appears to be properly um, showing the IP address and other information from the node in the vSphere. Uh, so if we could get some eyes on that, that would be lovely. Um, um, Fedora CrowS has been updated to the latest stable from um, March 23rd, and we now have a proper image for GCP uploaded. So installer in uh, today's nightly should be able to install on GCP without any um, additional replacements and things. And we'll add um, testing for that soon once we uh, ensure all the tests pass. At this moment, there is one test which is uh, flaking. So once we sort that out, uh, we'll additionally verify that nightlies and betas could be installed in GCP uh, in our CI. Um, uh, Vadim, um, that's different than having um, the FCAUSE image available on GCP. That means it's in Quay, but not still not on GCP. 
Uh, no, that's 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 all we need for uh, proper GCP support. Yeah, it is on GCP now properly. Uh, Fedora is uploading properly. to okay. GCP now. Perfect. That's that's what I was trying to articulate. Thank you. Uh, right. So uh, we're also working internally on additional tests, upgrades, and improving our release controller uh, infrastructure. That doesn't really affect um, the installations of OKD, um, but we we are now we soon will be able to add arbitrary upgrade tests. At this point, it's only the next nightly, and if it fails for some reason, um, we currently have to do a lot of manual work to add an upgrade pass for that. Um, once we land a few fixes, we would be able to run arbitrary tests, and uh, once the signature, uh, once this private keys would be uploaded to a location, um, our upgrade pass would be our our nightlies would be properly signed with a GC, with GBG key, which is trusted by CVO. So at this point, you have to add a force parameter to skip this check. But um, once we land this, um, you would be able to upgrade from web console just like um, just like standard OCP. And in um, and in 4.5. Um, we will also document how to run your own upgrade infrastructure and how to properly mirror releases and, and create arbitrary upgrade paths. That's awesome. Um, That's awesome. Uh, right. I mean, it's totally possible today, but it's just poorly documented. Um, I think that's pretty much all we started. Oh, um, we are preparing an enhancement uh, about the official state of the OKD on OCP so that other teams would be aware that uh, it soon would be an um, officially supported thing. And the, the main point is to get uh, some of the OKD bits into the master branch of the installer and MCO. Uh, once it's done, uh, we will prepare 4.5 um, snapshots. And we'll have them we'll have them rolling out same as uh four dot four currently. Um I don't think there is much community could help at this point, uh, except probably chiming in on what would you like to see in uh in OKD as a as in, in general. Uh how would it be different from OCP which are distinct features and so on. Um let me find the let me find the enhancement where we are discussing that. Why don't you, if you want to share the screen, that would be. Yeah, so we're going to essentially reuse the um, the existing OKD enhancement uh, proposal and um, make that a bit broader and include all the things uh, we think OKD needs to. Um, to sort of merge with master, um, undo the the current fork uh, situation, and um, yeah, from there on we should be in a pretty good place to um, really run everything in an automated manner and have um, essentially reuse all that that lands in master. Um, so I will be uh, updating this enhancement proposal um, sometime this week. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm right now working on something else, but that should be done uh, by tomorrow or maybe Thursday. And then I'll, I'll next thing for me is to update the proposal. So keep an eye and open. As soon as, that's uh, done, as soon as that's done, then OKD truly becomes upstream of OCP, right? Uh, well, it's not really upstream as much as a like a sibling uh, dis distribution because we, we yeah, will. Okay. Um, we will share the same master branch and maybe even some release uh, branching, but uh, yeah, it's because it's it's not really upstream anymore. It's the same code base, exactly the same code base as OCP, but uh, just with a different OS base. So it's a sibling brand. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, I, I like I like that even even better. 
it, it as a customer of, of OCP, it, it it makes it easy to transition back and forth from the lab to the data center. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that kind of synergy too, because that'll make life a lot easier for planning, scaling, and prioritizing um, stuff. And definitely on the on the service level, um, it should really um, be able to to do the same things. Later on, we definitely want to uh, enable people to upgrade from OKD to a paid subscription of OCP. Um, and with the mechanism we have, you could, you can just switch out the base OS by um, sort of pulling a different machine OS content that would be our cost based and thus upgrading from or moving, migrating from OKD to OCP. And yeah. So we won't have to and do it the hard way. <laughs> exactly. It should be from, from now on. Um, it should be pretty easy to do. Um, we just have to, you know, document that and uh, also do do some testing so we can have more. Yeah, just be yeah, just be more more sure that it's uh, that it works out for for those specific uh, versions you're on of OKD. So that's probably a thing um, our salespeople will love. But um, yeah, it's not nothing we need to focus on right now. Right now, it, the first thing is still the OKD GA release uh, we want to get done, and after that, um, we'll get to those, um, you know, those bits. Yeah, our short-term goal is um, to land the OKD installer in the upstream branches, so that installer folks would not be confused by um, by folks who are, uh, are filing random issues and showing random bits of the OKD installer because right now they're not very much aware of what's happening there. And once they would see that the code change is pretty small, um, they would be able to experiment with new things a bit easier. So I think that's pretty much all from my side. Um, let's move on. Yeah, okay. I, I'd like to thank you, Vadim, uh, for uh, for preparing the the beta two release and also doing the uh, preparing the PRs to uh, upgrade the the fork branches. Uh, so thanks for all the work you put in. I second that. Uh, yeah, I awesome. third that. We're, yeah, we're getting there, guys. It's a, we're, we're, it's really happening. So I'm. I'm Pretty thrilled with the whole thing. So thanks again, um, Vadim and and everybody else. So um, Charo, um, not to put you on the spot, but um, we've been talking on and off in this meeting about um, documentation and documenting how an OKD release is built was something um, we had talked about, as well as getting better documentation overall. How? Um, and, and I'll just ask, because I haven't looked in two weeks. I apologize. I have been busy with other stuff as well. Um, the documentation issues that we've been logging, um, how is the, doc, the, the, the docs.okd.io looking? Is, has, have we gotten out the, um, gotten the FCOS um, references in and the, um, the, the RCOS, or however I'm supposed to say that acronym, out? Um, or is it still, um, are we still in limbo land with the documentation, just the baseline documentation? Um, so I think the first chunk has landed. Uh, there are still several small pieces we need to fix. Um, I can prepare a pull request this week, probably. Yeah, I've been, I've been using the OKD.io docs. Um, as I've as I've been working in my lab and and uh, they're much better in, in the last week um, I'll say there 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 may still be some uh, I, somebody had posted an issue there were still some issues to um, Red Hat Core OS uh, but I'm seeing less and less of those yeah I because I, I haven't looked at you. There, there was some really direct have you all filed many issues. So far, I haven't found any actual 
issues with the documentation. Um, I'm taking some notes of, of some things that that might need to be added or clarified as I'm as I'm adding more capabilities to my lab. Um, some of them around um, adding persistent storage. I've got Ceph running now in the lab, hyperconverged in the cluster, uh, and that's a very repeatable process. Uh, and have the the registry using a persistent volume so i've got some notes that um, i can share with somebody around that that would help the documentation and now i'm working on pipelines i, I need to get um, tecton working so that in in the lab at work uh, i can get developers uh, actually functional in in okd4 yeah, it does. It does look good to me right now. Uh, the things that I was worried about that it was still referencing the wrong core OS um, uh, that that got fixed. So that was my my big that was my big red flag. Um, the other bits, as long as it's working and you keep adding issues, I'm happy with that um, progress. But the other thing that we were talking about was um, the idea about creating um, some documentation on how the release is, itself is built. And I don't think that's even, have you done any um, writing or drafting, Charo, on that at all? No, I, I haven't even started working with either Christian or, or Vadim on getting me up to speed on how the, how the new environment works to build one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I need to get I need to get the lab fully functional for a developer, and then I'll be able to rewind and spin back through the whole thing. Okay. And basically start with an empty code base and and build it from there. Um, I'm just I'm not that I'm picking on you, but um, the other thing we talked about was auto updates for the beta that you were going to test test them. Yeah. And did did that happen? It did, and it works. You you have to add the dash dash force um, at, at least for the for the nightlies. Um, I haven't done it yet from beta one to beta two, but my assumption is since they're also since they're just labeled from the nightlies that they also are missing the signatures. Okay. Is that uh, correct, Vadim? That you you still need the dash dash force from the command line to execute an update? Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, that is a part of a huge effort to uh, how to run your own disconnected environment entirely. So once we sort out a few issues, the OKD's release controller would be first one we would be experimenting with. Yeah, and that's actually a good call out that he just made. My my environment is running as though it were a disconnected environment. Because I'm I'm running mine as though I were actually in a data center, and my CISO didn't allow machines in my data center to talk directly to the outside world. Right. The the thing is, uh, all of that is happening on the infrastructure side, and uh, it's just at some point the nightlies would be able to upgrade uh, without force. Um, I'm working with Clayton on that. Uh, I don't have any time frame when that happens. I'm really hoping by the end of the month, but I'll be pushing for that to happen sooner. Now, the good news is, is that with the dash dash force, it works. And, and if you look at the releases in the in the um, nightlies, the the ones connected with the little green dots, you you can just walk up that tree. You can run an update. Go make yourself some coffee or um, pour a dram of scotch and come back when it's done and run it again. Yep, I did I did something similar as well, and it worked as well as could be expected. So I was very pleased. I, I did, um, I did yeah. open a couple of issues that, that I came across. One of them uh, may just be my environment. But I cannot get the console to work with the newest version of Safari. Works fine with Chrome. Worked okay with Firefox. Yeah. Interesting. I have the inverse oh, problem. This is it doesn't work in Chrome for me, but it works fine in Safari. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Certificate <laughs> problems? Check your extension, uh, I think. There's clear, some extension so I, I have that's not, there, like, cooperating. Could you just swap your consoles, please? 
<laughs> uh, so both of these are bugs, and you should file them sooner. Uh, pretty odd bug, though, but definitely a console bug. Yeah. While we're on the sorry, while we're on the topic of updates, I did notice I'm also running beta two in my lab and it's stable works fine. I did notice in the update channels now it has options. There's stable four four, fast four four, and candidate four four. Are are fast and candidate a real thing yet, or are they just placeholders for now? Um. So the channels in console are hard coded. We're also one of the parts for the disconnected um, update structure is to, is to have a server which shows which channels do we have. And in the OKD, we have entirely different channels. Uh, this is why OKD would be the first one where we would experiment with um, automatic, with fetching which channels do you have available, because uh, really, you can you can set any names for those, but right. console hard code once we have an OCP, and um, uh, hopefully very soon we will on hard code that, and you would be able to see uh, at least stable four and probably nightly. So um, the the four stable that's currently on the the CI release website has nothing to do with the stable four channel right now that I see. No, stable four channel is what you see on origin dash release. That's stable four. That's correct. Okay. And then uh, fast and candidate, we don't have it. We have nightly channel. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and fixes. Uh, uh, this is basically a coincidence that it all works. Um, but these are barks, which we will fix um, very soon. Yeah, and I, right. I haven't tried running an upgrade from the console. I, I've been doing it from the command line. Yeah, I initiated mine from the command line, then I watched its progress on the console, and that all seemed to work totally fine. Like, it showed yes. things upgrading, and that was very cool. Yep, it, it was indeed. Something else that I, that I opened up, um, and, and I've seen this across the beta one and then several of the nightlies uh, above that is the um, Etsy D is still is logging errors trying to talk to the bootstrap node which is gone Ooh, I I have not seen that my my etcd operator is currently complaining that um, my etcds are degraded uh, probably because my SSD is too crappy but they're not trying to talk to the bootstrap. That's interesting. Uh, it, dig into the logs and see if maybe you see it in the logs. You, you don't see it by host name. You'll you'll see you'll see a um, I dropped the logs in an issue that I opened. You'll see it failed to connect, and it will be the IP address and port twenty three seventy nine of your bootstrap node, which which is long gone. I'll take a look, yeah. The, the only reason I saw it was actually investigating the same thing that you were seeing was every once in a while it's reporting the etcd, um, it, it's reporting them as the nodes as unhealthy. Yeah, exactly. Mine just constantly cycled in and out of unhealthy. I figured it was because of some latency thing and it was tuned for enterprise level NVMEs or something like that. But Yeah, yeah well, and I'm running mine on fast SSDs and the masters all have 20 gig of RAM and eight vCPUs um, and the nodes themselves aren't showing any resource constraints or anything the nodes themselves are reporting as healthy um, yeah the operator is complaining and I came across these issues in the logs while I was looking to see if there was any reason they might be saying they were unhealthy because otherwise everything is working fine Exactly. My entire cluster is great. Nothing else has any problems. The API server has no trouble doing its job. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. We, we, would, we would need to file that. It seems the file both bugs for the uh, to the operator. I know we are tweaking 
um, um, health bit checks the on Azure because their disks are usually slower. So we're allowing them to reply with a bigger with a bigger latency. And I'm pretty sure this setting should be available externally so that you would be able to shoot yourself in the leg and uh, increase that timeout if you have slower machines. As for the bootstrap node, it probably doesn't remove itself um, after the bootstrap is dead, which is a bug. It should, should be long gone. If you can put one the... other update. I, I saw there's a there's a working workaround now from Praveen for the CRC blocker. Um, I haven't tried it yet. Okay. Like I said, I've been I've been fighting with the new hell that is Tecton. Oh, okay. Which I like much better than Jenkins. I hate Jenkins, but it, it's it's a whole new ball game. Oh, Amen. Yeah. He just finally killed our Jenkins system. I am so incredibly happy for that. It finally got shut off on Monday. Yeah, well, everything goes in cycles. It does indeed. Yeah, three years from now, you're going to be telling me whatever the new Tecton is. So, yeah, just get used to it. Um, so oh, I'm already used to it. So we <laughs> don't have any update on the, the CRC yet still. So, um that would be a, a wonderful thing to get working before April 27th. I know it's coming soon, um, like 14 days from now, so that the link, we might have a viable link to a CRC um, for the, the OpenShift Commons gathering. But um, that may not be possible or not. But if it is, let me know and just ping me directly, Charo, and, and I'll work with you to get whatever documentation we need up on okd.io so we can replace that link to the 311 mini shift and um, move on that would be great we talked a little bit also about reordering the repos in the github to be more 4.0 centric i don't think i saw any work done on that um but if you have a, a suggestion charo of reordering if you could float that by us um as well maybe as an issue um, yeah, I actually I did the the pinned repositories after um, you and Christian and I had that conversation. Uh, somebody changed the pinned repositories to reflect what we had talked about. Okay, so maybe it did yeah, get so, done. Yeah, I think that it it looks. I'm looking at it right now. It was it was actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I talked to Clayton afterwards, and he changed it up for us. It's in the done yeah, list. So Yay! It looks good. All right. So um, what I don't have here are all the issues um, linked in here. So the update on the blocker for CRV we've done, we've, talk, we've added the etcd operator issues, console bugs in different browsers that everybody talked about, Neil, and that um, if you log in, um, an issue, let me know. The update on... Yeah, the can, um, if, if you do encounter those bugs in the web console, for example, um, I would ask you to actually just file a bug on, on the respective repository. In this example, so we're gonna we're the, we're supposed to do that now. Yeah, well, you could you can also just file it in the OKD one, but then we'd probably just uh, you know Transfer. move it over there, uh, triage it ourselves, and if you want to have it directly uh, done, you can just open it in in the repository it belongs to, and the the team then should sort of uh, take a look at that. Um, that's responsible. Yeah. yeah, Neil, what I've been doing is I've been opening the issues in um, the OKD issues. Uh, but okay. Then, but, but then Vadim or Christian or, or some of the other folks that are monitoring that have been re really good about saying, oh, this this is like FCOS tracker. And so then I'll, I'll open an issue in the FCOS tracker. Okay. And that way we kind of... We, we've got them all under OKD for meetings like this, where where we've got a single place to reference them. But the folks who are actually working on those particular repos aren't necessarily monitoring OKD. Yeah. Yeah, and with with us uh, really merging with the master again, um, essentially all of the bugs we encounter in OKD 
uh, will also be bugs in OCP, or at least most of them, um, unless they're you know really specific to the platform, to the base OS. Um, they should be exactly the same as in, in the OCP product. So it just makes sense to uh, really file them at the component. Um, they, they sort of show up uh, directly because otherwise, you know, the, we, we don't really want to be, we don't want to use uh, this meeting as a, you know, bugzilla uh, triaging thing um, because there's, you know, th there's heaps of, of, of open issues, obviously. So, um, you know, but of course, if there's one thing that really consistently um, annoys OKD users, we'll, we'll definitely uh, look more closely, but otherwise it, we'll, we'll treat it just as any other bug um, that, you know, has a team uh, assigned to it. Yeah, and the more hands we get in the pot, the more bugs we're going to find. Yeah, actually, uh, there was one bug uh, filed by Joseph. I'm, I'm not sure, is he here today? Um, I think today, and um, that also, that was master code, um, and I think Vadim already uh, filed a PR to fix it today as well. So that was really great um, to see how, how that, you know, that feedback uh, cycle really works for, for OKD already, and it'll be even better when we when we get to the real release. There, captured that one, all right. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, if I missed anything else for today. Um, the update on update, I think you gave that already, Vadim? Or is that, more, that's more um, Charo writing, I think. Um, that still probably hasn't been done on this yet. Yeah, we would need a new hacking document. I can work on that, how to replace bits of OKD. Yeah, and I um, think Charo was volunteering to, to help with that as well. Yeah, absolutely, Vadim. I, I, I would love to start building some of these, some of the um, cluster operators directly from source. Okay, by the next meeting, so I'll... I'll uh... I'll prepare a few basic things, and then we'll see how to um, how to expand that. That yeah, that sounds great. If if you want to start kicking some things my way, as <laughs> I have some spare time in the evenings, I'll I'll try them out. You, you know, the instructions don't need to be super explicit because I, I can I'll, I'll dig around as as best I can and ask you questions. But that way, you don't have to create a a, a massive comprehensive document before we start testing something. Right then. Anything else people um, want to talk about? I always want to talk about documentation, but that's just me. Um, and I think with Charo's, with Charo's help and other people's feedback, we can get that up and running. Um, and I don't think Dusty or Benjamin Gilbert are on the call. I was going to try and tap them to do a, an FCAUS update. Anybody um, on the call directly? Well, Micah's from FCAUS, I think, isn't he? Is, oh, but, 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 but Micah, speak up and forever hold your peace or jump off the call now. Um, yeah, yeah, Micah's in the meeting. What's he doing in here then? <laughs> I'm surprised he would join the next one. Um, there's right. been quite a few in FCOS, but I'm not really that familiar with it to speak about it. Hopefully, we would get some more um, vision about what's what's going to happen soon and uh, which changes should we be aware of. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was uh, and Micah. I don't I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I was hoping to get Dusty or um, Benjamin to do uh, a state of F Fedora Core OS talk that I could pre-record and have on demand for the um, OpenShift Commons gathering on the 27th. So um, I know everybody's busy, but um, and it's all crazy out there, but if, if you have a connection to them and, and to, can nudge them a little bit, that would be great. 
Yeah, I think Dusty is, he might be working on something for Summit uh, outside of the community uh, track, but uh, I yeah. that it uh, intersects with FGOS, so he could he could probably massage something uh, for that. Yeah, that's, I think that, I, you know, I don't want to put, I think he's already, like, because there's, in Summit, there's a community central stuff and a whole bunch of us, like I did a OKD talk and, and a whole bunch of short shorts. Um, and I think there might be a Fedora CoreOS update in there. So if he's already done it, fine. Um, just as long as the content's there and I can cross list to it. So that's kind of what I'm I'm looking for. Um, and I can always edit something he's done and turn it into a state of talk. So I'm not trying to make more work for people. I just yeah, want to get that content. I can, I can follow up with him and see what he's working on there. Yeah, and, and just, yeah, whatever whatever he's got. If, he re, if he's recorded already, um, if I can get the URL to it or the video file, I can always upload it to the on-demand section for um, for the gathering at Summit on the 27th. Sure. That would be good. Because that's what I did with one of the other talks is, um, I think it was the, the platform services guys recorded something for Summit, their roadmap, and I just shape-shifted it into a state of talk for them. But I didn't have to re-record it. But that's all I have on my crazy agenda that I use to run this meeting with, um, which seems to work, um, at least for me, hopefully for you guys as well. Um, the, the one other question I had still was, I think if I'm, two things, actually two more questions. Is Azure the only place where the images are not available um, on, in their marketplace? Or did that get updated? No, they're still not on Azure, I think. Okay. So I'll leave that there. And then there was a blocker for OpenStack. Has that been resolved? Uh, we're still waiting for the next Ignition release. Okay. That's that's the note that I have in here somewhere. Um, do Ignition. And GCP, does GCP still need to man manually upload images, or did I hear you earlier in the meeting say that they were okay? Now they had them yeah, on. Yeah, that should be that should be fixed. Okay, good. What about CRC? How's that? Has anything happened there, uh, Christian? Uh, so we've had Praveen's. Um, well, yeah, Praveen's uh, fix has been merged, um, but I think it's still a manual process to override um, those uh, configs to allow like an unsafe etcd with only one uh, one one host. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I have to follow up with him when I get, uh, get some time to um, to talk about how we could build yeah b just build an as an OKD based CRC from that. And I, yes. I imagine we can still automate it in some way. Yeah, Neil, I'll, I'll send you a link. We've got an issue open in um, OKD about that that Praveen recently um, responded to. I haven't had a chance to, to try it yet because um, he, he just responded a, a couple days ago. The, as soon as the Bootstrap API is up, um, there's a command you run from another terminal that sets that unsafe parameter for etcd and then from there on it's supposed to proceed building the um, single node cluster and, and then from there presumably the rest of the directions for building the bundle for crc should work and, and at that point we would have then something folks could download and run crc against it to get a single node cluster running yep that's it right there what you've got on the screen Found it. Yeah, so it's now we need to. No. Okay. Yeah, I think we, we need to uh, follow up on that, uh, reach out to him, uh, see how we can automate this um, and uh, build CRC uh, with those instructions. So the other question I have, and I think um, that, that um, Neil, you were going to test over. Um, and I maybe we've talked about this already, but it has it. it, it I think it does work. Um, can I take this out of this note? Over it has not been tested yet, but should work. Neil, I think you 
att attempted to test it and it passed? I have not attempted yet. Okay. Um, I will leave yeah. it in. Yep. Uh, that is something I hope to do in weeks, maybe. It depends on when I can get power back in my on my servers. Okay. All right. We have um, we have quite a few um, reports about Overt, and we fixed several bugs. I think it should be working now. We just need um, a contact person for that. Yeah, the number of bugs open for Overt on the OKD repo do not inspire confidence. <laughs> well, you inspire confidence, Neil. Go out and test it. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I have a box that isn't dead or that I can actually IPMI to, I will I will try. Okay. I am still trying to get my servers back online after having a power outage in our data center area for weeks. Okay, well, so we'll wait. Tan tangential question. Ha has anyone tried Cubivert yet? And theoretically, will it work in OKD 4.4? It should work, yes. Um, we're not r really testing it regularly, though. Okay. Somebody I'll tested add that it. I'll to my list to eventually give a try, because th that's... That that's really what I'm interested in seeing is a is a bare metal OpenShift environment that is also managing my virtual machines. It's not that the I open like VMware and Rev, but it'd be nice <clears throat> to not have it'd to. It'd be nice for... to bare metal it. Yes. Um. Uh. Christian, does the OpenStack API still require Swift, or is that gone now? Uh, so that's for the OpenStack install, right? Yep. Uh, so we removed we removed that, but we, with removing it, we broke OpenShift because it now requires um, HTTP headers in the ignition spec, and that's gonna land in in ignition spec 3.1. It's already in the code for ignition spec 3.1 um, experimental, but we don't have a binary. Um, to work with that that um, accepts that. So uh, that's why OpenStack is currently not working because we're not on Swift anymore, but we use, uh, we don't have the, the ignition binary that sort of um, includes the replacement functionality. So OpenStack is now broken. Cool. Yeah, OpenStack is still broken. <laughs> okay. And yeah, it used to work before and we broke it with uh, the last um, rebase. That's did, okay. Do we break it for all of OpenShift or just OKD? Just, oh, just, just for OpenStack OKD. Okay. Um, the OCP is not broken yet. No, it, actually OCP um, already has, this feature has already landed in Ignition Spec 2. That was kind of a, a minor regression. Um, with um, spec three, it landed in spec two first, and yeah, it has just yet to uh, get built for for FCOS. Yeah, at this point, what are we, what are we looking at for time before the next ignition version to land? Are we just so, waiting um, forever? Yeah, um, essentially yes. I, I, internally, I um, I asked whether we could get a new build uh, or a new new release. And it, I was told it, it shouldn't be too long. It's just one commit mess, uh, missing. And that's been sort of, um, that was two weeks ago or three. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll follow up again with, with that. Um, maybe we can get a, a new experimental, uh, like or just a new build, a new really minor release uh, that includes the experimental code that would already be enough for us uh, to unblock OpenStack. I think um, the the actual aim is um, to release uh, Ignition 2 with Spec 3.1 stable. Um, so we yeah, as we don't really uh, need to wait for that, I'll just ask for, for another release to be cut, as is. Uh, Excellent. So, yeah. It might, otherwise, it might be a few more weeks. Um, I, yeah. I I'm really not sure how long that's gonna take. But yeah, I'll I'll, I'll um, 
follow up on that. Okay. okay. All right. Um, we got 10 more minutes left. Are there other things we should be talking about? Questions people have? I'm just checking in the blue jeans. Chris has to go. Thanks for joining us, Chris. I'll see if we can get uh, that. I had a follow-up question to um, uh, to the gathering at, at Red Hat Summit. Um, is there a so if I'm registered for Summit, I can access the the Commons gathering, or is there a separate registration I have to do? It's all the same registration. Okay, and, great. Um, I will send an email out to this mailing list and to the Commons mailing list and to every mailing list that I own, um, explaining that it's not wicked clear on the summit page, but there are some mentions of the gathering on the 27th, it's sort of a day zero event. Um, there, the reason I keep asking people from this group to join is, oh, last count, I think there was close to 19,000 people had signed up. Um, we normally have max about 500 people show up for a gathering. So um, I am, re and this, they're not oh, all, they, they aren't all, They a lot of them aren't even aware the gathering is happening. So they're going to get an email from me shortly um, if they register, um, if they're registered already, letting them know. And so I'm my biggest concern and my happiest thought is that we have a flood of people who have never been to a gathering showing up for a gathering. And my other big fear is that there's just me and five of my closest friends um, in the chat answering their questions um, while all the talks are raging on. Um, so, uh, you know, if you can come, that would be wonderful. And um, just, and it, it's pretty much, it's an open chat, so you can answer questions, talk to each other. Um, I have not used this platform before. It's called Intrato. If anyone's used it before, you've got more experience than me with it. All I've been doing is recording all of the briefings and talks and getting them uploaded. Um, so it's really on the 27th, it's a huge experiment for us and we are the guinea pigs for the virtual summit which will be happening the next two days so um and i'm not wicked worried about it because it's a good problem to have i just would be nice to have um, more more voices um in the chat than just you know the, the usual suspects and a lot of product managers yeah, i'm looking at micah so so red hat Summit is the 28th? Yes. 28th and the 29th, I think, is what they said. Yeah. Like, the, the scheduling is really weird to look at. It is, it, but it's, you got to realize every the virtual experience is the 27th, and you don't even know when you register. Like, if I go in and register, because I think it might, it might have it on the agenda now, actually. I think it's, if I go, I don't want to, uh, sorry, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to hit the agenda. I think it might mention pre us as a pre-event. Yep, oh, there we go. That, that was not there when I looked okay. yesterday. So they I know. Know. Diane's been working a lot in the background here. Um, so well, thank you, Diane. <laughs> so hopefully we can get that there, and that the agenda for that day will look a lot surprisingly a lot like uh, the summit, uh, the gathering comments. Hey Diane, yeah. send me send me a reminder link about that, um, either in Slack or, or email, and yep. I'll try to I'll try to spend a good bit of time on the twenty seventh um, hanging out there. Yeah. So there's some uh, great yeah. um, there. This this one here, I'll just admit it up front, is a replay from the London event. Um, Francesco did a great talk about using open source to fight pan epidemics. And um, in London in January, it was um, very prescient, I think. I think they already at Public Health England were already watching what was going on now. So um, it's I, it's a really interesting talk. Um, and then there's you know a whole bunch of other customers and end users talking. Um, and I didn't put the names here. Okay, now I can see what I'm missing here. Um, but some really interesting use cases for it. And then there is um, a good OpenStack one at BB BBVA that's um, pretty interesting about running, op they're running OpenShift on OpenStack. 
um, and some OpenShift on OpenStack stuff. So, you know, you can be in the background saying what we broke in OKD and OpenStack for that one. <laughs> well, I mean, I know that myself and Dan uh, will will from data will definitely be present for this cat for the comments gathering. Sri, may I think Sri, do you plan to show up as well? Or I do. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So. So yeah. at least you'll count on us, the data yeah. people, to show up. We, yeah, you and 18,000 others, um, hopefully. I mean, and it could be nobody shows up, so it could be just you and me. I have, I, I'm really excited about it, as you could probably tell, um, and just because I think it's it's the way of the future that we're going to be doing a lot of these virtual things, um, like we do these working group meetings, um, and you know this. I'm, I'm very curious for people's feedback on it. So maybe um, at whatever the next OKD working group meeting is, um, if we can have a little talk about, you know, what worked and what didn't, that would be great too. Sure. Oh. Right, so if we're registered already for Commons uh, or for the summit, there's you nothing are... we need to do for the 27th. Nope. Just remember to show up. Um, and okay. I'm, I don't know in the background what corporate marketing, because I don't normally work with corporate marketing, um, what they're doing to update people that it's coming or send a reminder, but um, I'm slowly getting to be a cog in their wheel. So um, hopefully by the 27th, there'll be some little reminder note that goes out um, in the morning um, with everybody's for everybody. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm it's, sure all of the emails from them probably go straight to my spam box too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's like the well, Red Hat partner emails. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But this anything that says summit in it right now, listen to for a little while because it's going to yeah. be. Really, they're doing a very good job, I have to say, because summit normally has three to four hundred talks in it um, the, on the two days, and obviously we're not going to be running three to four hundred virtual talks. But they're recording a huge amount of them in advance to be be available on demand. So. Um, I have a lot of respect for the people who have managed to herd those cats because I'm only herding, you know, 10 talks out of 300. So uh, they're, they're doing a lot more than, than I'm doing. Um, I just get to be the guinea pig for the, the software interface. So that's that's my fun. But anyways, that brings us to the end of the, um, the hour. Um, and we'll meet again in two weeks' time. What's the date in two weeks? Look at my well, that's the, that's the 28th. We will not meet again in two weeks' time. Um, let's say we meet on the on the 5th. Uh, okay. Christian, can you adjust the um, Fedora calendar for that? I can do that. It may. I, I'm probably going to do that tomorrow, though. Um, oh, that's okay. Check. That's fine. It's All not right. urgent. All right. <laughs> so we just shift shift the cadence uh, cadence by one week. Yeah. For that one meeting. That's what yeah. we're saying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just because there's just right. no way. There's just no way. And um, <laughs> no, there is no way. All right. Yeah, so, no, no. I, I, I totally agree. Um, all right. Th thanks for hosting, Diane. And thank you, everybody, for joining in today. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye, all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Uh, and James, I think it's a. Uh, we'll we'll figure out the shift, whether it's permanently shifted the fifth, and then two weeks after that, when we meet again, we'll we'll see. <laughs>